So we finally made it to YouTube. We finally made it to YouTube. Wow, that's crazy. I've been talking about this. I've been talking about going on YouTube for so long. It's ridiculous. Um, but we finally made it. This is the last place that procrastination has kept me back. So we're finally here. And you might know me from my TikTok day in life videos or my Instagram page. Some of you might know me from high school. I, I honestly doubt that because I went to school with like the same 20 people. And I'll talk about this more, but you know, it's either that or you maybe see me around in Houston or maybe you don't know me at all. And this is like one of the first videos you see on your for you page or whatever YouTube calls it, wherever. But the truth is, honestly, none of you know me. None of you really know me. You might know a side of me, but you really don't know me because up until this video, quite frankly, I've been very intentional about who I share certain sides of me with, whether it's my serious side, my sarcastic side. Honestly, thinking about it now, most of you, if you've ever met me, have probably met my sarcastic side. I need to do better about not being so sarcastic. But regardless, the point is I never just volunteer all parts of me until I really get to know somebody and they're really close to me. And even then it's difficult for me to do and I don't even want to say it's difficult. It's just something that I choose not to do. I could probably count on one hand the amount of people that have seen all sides of me. Yeah, probably less than probably less than one hand, right? And so to kick off my YouTube journey, where just to be clear, my objective is to document my process, share a little bit about my philosophy on certain things, and really talk about the things I know about, right? Share knowledge on the things I actually know about so you can gain some value from the things that I'm learning every single day. I thought there's no better place than to start by sharing with you guys my story thus far. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm not, I'm not a finished product yet. I'm 23 years old and I've accomplished a lot, some would say, compared to the average 23 year old, but I'm not average. I hold myself to a high standard because I know what my mission is. And it's certainly not to be like everyone else. Now, that being said, I'm not a guru. <laughs> I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. And right now, this page is not dedicated to teaching you how to be a millionaire in 30 days because I'm not a millionaire right now, right? I will be, but I'm not a millionaire right now. But I will tell you one thing, though. Every single day, I strive for more, whether that's physical, mental, spiritual, everything. And especially over the last 12 months or so, I've been dedicating my life to becoming my best self. And so as I learn, I'll be sharing those things with you. Me sharing my story will help you guys understand where I've come from. So you have a better picture into who I am and how I really think. Now, the second reason why I'm making this video is because I want you guys to feel like you can relate to me. I'm a firm believer in leading by example. And this has always been my mission, but if someone can look at my page and the content I put out and want to do more for themselves because they see that I'm doing more for myself, then I consider that a success. I want you guys to feel empowered whenever you see me, not because I've already made it yet, but because I know and believe with 100% certainty that every single thing that I'm after in this life, I will accomplish. And I want you guys to feel the same way. So with that being said, let's start from the very top. So I was born December 30th, 1999. And even though I'm not huge into astrology, that means I'm a Capricorn. And, you know, according to the people that I've talked to who know about horoscopes and astrology and are entered into that and are my friends, of course, right? They tell me I'm pretty much the physical manifestation of a Capricorn male. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but you know, I'll take it, right? And I grew up in a very Christian household and I'm also first generation American, which means my mom actually came here from the island of Trinidad and Tobago when she was 19, to actually go to dental school, which reminds me I have a dentist appointment later today, which is really ironic. But, and if you know anything about immigrant parents, she was always super strict about believing in God and practicing religion. And honestly, I feel like that was a good and a bad thing, but we'll talk about it in another video. And you know, it's not a secret about me. I am definitely a mama's boy. Ask anybody though, they'll, they'll pretty much tell you, right? There's just no one that I love on this earth more than my mother. She's done so much for me and she has a lot to do with who I'm trying to be as a man and why I'm doing a lot of things that I'm doing. And I'm telling you guys this, not because I want you to treat me like a mama's boy or whatever, because honestly, I don't feel like it's an insult to say that you're a mama's boy. I can't imagine any guy not being a mama's boy, but um, that's definitely me, right? But the reason why I'm telling you guys is because it has a lot to do with my outlook on life and why I am the way that I am. You know, how I treat women, how I carry myself, you know, my opinions on certain issues, all of it ties back to the fact that I love my mom and I'm a mama's boy, whatever. But I grew up in a small town right outside of Houston, about 30 miles east called Baytown. And you know, if you're from Houston or if you're not from Houston, I will always tell you I'm from Houston. But if you're from Houston, I'll tell you I'm from Baytown, right? But um, always, someone always has something to say about Baytown. I don't know what it is, but I always claim Houston. But either way, the point is I've spent the better majority of my 23 years here in the same city. It is pretty ironic considering I'm about to move. And by the time you're watching this video, I might have already moved. Um, 
I'm not gonna say where I'm moving to yet, but if you're watching this in like two months, you'll probably already know. So it doesn't even matter, right? But while I was living there, I went to a very, very, very small school. I'm talking very small school. But even before I even went to school, I was actually homeschooled for the first three years of my, I don't know if you call it academic career, right? I don't know. I was, I was homeschooled for kindergarten, first grade uh, through third grade. And then finally, my sisters and I, we were sent to a small Christian academy all throughout elementary, middle and high school. So a lot of people that I graduated high school with, I pretty much knew since I was like nine and 10. Um, so that, I mean, I don't know. That's, I think that's kind of cool, but I was always a smart kid. I actually skipped the grade. Whoop, whoop. I skipped kindergarten to get into uh, first grade early. And so I was always the youngest in my class. I actually graduated high school at 17, but up until eighth grade, my only dream was to be an NBA player. I mean, who didn't want to be an NBA player? I, I, I grew up watching LeBron James. Like my dream was to one day play against LeBron someday. Someday that may still happen. I might still have some <laughs> some basketball left in me, but I was never an amazing athlete for most of my professional career. I don't want to, is it professional? When I call it professional, I don't know. For most of my sports career, I was a bench rider. I was last on the bench. I don't think I started a game until maybe junior junior year in high school. I'll try, I'll try and find some film of, from my playing days, but honestly, I don't, I don't think it exists. But I remember it like yesterday, the day I gave up on my hoop dreams. It was the same day that I got an iPhone and I hopped on YouTube, Ball is Life, and I saw kids like Andrew Wiggins and De'Aaron Fox, Shabari Parker doing like 360 windmill dunks, and I couldn't even do a left-hand layup. And I'm pretty sure that was the same exact day that I was like, yeah, NBA is not for me. I'm not gonna play on the team. I'm just gonna give up right here. But I didn't give up on basketball completely though. I remember it is that same day actually, I shifted my dreams from playing on an NBA team to owning one. And someday I'm gonna rewatch this video and I'm going to own an NBA team. I can't tell you exactly which one, I am going to shoot for the Miami Heat, but you know, I will own an NBA team, trust me. All right, let's not get carried away right now. I could talk about that all day, but let's go back to my school days. One thing I noticed about myself and a lot of people noticed about me, honestly, was that I've always been different. I never really fit in with the crowd. I would always talk about dreams of owning a large business or becoming super rich and doing all these fancy and cool things. And I never really had anyone that dreamt with me like the most i would ever hear was that i wanted to be a doctor or a nurse or something along those lines right you know the standard high paying highly respected careers that you know most kids my age wanted to be and i just never wanted to be anything like that but i never really had a friend in school that wanted to do the same exact thing as me so i often kind of just felt different you know now, now don't get me wrong people liked me but i was always the the black kid that spoke white right the cool kids were the athletes and you know i certainly was not a star player so there was always that disconnect now in high school though i actually found my love for music now one thing people don't know about me is i actually grew up playing the piano but i quit practicing whenever i was about 10 or 11 and to this day I don't really have many regrets in life, but the one thing I regret the most is stopping playing the piano. I wish I could go back and pick it all up and be a wizard, you know, a little Beethoven, but I don't know. I just stopped because it was quite frankly, it was just boring, right? I was just playing a lot of this classical music. I wasn't really playing or practicing music that I enjoyed. So I just kind of burnt out of it. But I remember whenever I was 16, my cousin Taj actually visited our house one day and he brought with him this cracked music software. Um, that he was making beats with. And I instantly fell in love. In between 2016 and 2022, there was nothing that I loved more than making beats and producing music. There is just something about creating something that never existed in the entire universe before until you brought it in that I just got so addicted to. And honestly, I still am. And during that period of my life, I really wanted to be a famous music producer. Guys like Metro Boomin, OVO40, Boy Wanda, you know, even Kanye West, Southside, these guys. I wanted to be in rooms with these people and get to know them based on my talent in music. And I remember days where I would just find any excuse to just sit on my workstation and just create music all day and not have a care in the world. And that was just peace for me. I just loved doing that all the time. And I genuinely believe that that part of me will resurface someday. Like, don't be surprised if you see me doing like what Shaq's doing right now. Like the EDM, DJ, all that stuff, producing music, all that stuff. Like if you see me doing that, that should not be a surprise to you now. But I just kind of made the decision in 2022 that right now isn't the right time for me. Now, when I graduated high school in 2017, third of my class, by the way, I really should have been valedictorian. And Nicole, if you're watching this, I should have beat you as valedictorian. But, you know, we let sleeping dogs lie. I'm not going to pick a fight today. But 
I really should have been valedictorian. Now, this is whenever things really started to take off for me. I started to really explore who I was as a person. And, you know, one thing people don't know about me, my degree is actually in neuroscience. And even though I don't actually do anything with my degree right now, if I didn't go to Baylor, I 100% would not be where I am right now. Life has a really funny way of playing out, to be honest with you. Now, this is kind of contradictory, but if you were to ask me if I were to do it all over again, in other words, is college important? Should people go? Because people ask me this question all the time because I don't use my degree, right? But if you were to ask me, is college important? I honestly don't know what I would tell you. I think that's a very complicated question and we can dive into that at another time, but I don't think it's as cut and dry as just saying yes or no. But anyways, back to Baylor. This is also the time I really started to break out of my shell. I was always an introvert. I was cool once you get to know me, but I was never the person that would go out of his way to speak to somebody. But I really started to break out of that shell when I was at Baylor. I, I experienced love for the first time. I experienced heartbreak several times. And it's always funny whenever I say that because no one ever believes me. <laughs> Believe it, you are, I'm not gonna sit up here and you know try and convince you that I have a heart, a broken heart, whatever. But um, yeah, I've experienced love, experienced heartbreak, everything in between. Um, so I understand Guys, I understand your pain. It was during this time that I honestly started to understand how people work. R remember, for most of my adolescent life, I was in the same school for 12 years with the same 20 or so people. So now this whole new college world was something I had to adapt to. I had to evolve up socially. I had to evolve up mentally, right? And all of that is what happened here at school. So my sophomore year, I actually crossed into a fraternity. Shout out to all my alpha brothers out there. But this was the time I really started to mold into a man. I started having responsibilities on campus. Now my life was a little bit bigger than just me. I had things I was actually responsible for. I was the president my last year at school and more people knew who I was, all of these things, right? And going into my last two years of college, my world really began to shift. Now, one thing about me, school was never something I had to struggle with, right? If I wanted an A, I could get an A. And that's how life was for me all throughout undergrad, all throughout high school, middle school, everywhere. And I never really had to try to get the things that I wanted. But moving into my junior year, classes start to get a little harder and ask anyone. Neuroscience is one of the most difficult degrees to excel in, especially at a school like Baylor. But I eventually found a way. Now at this time around 2018, 2019, my focus was on two things, graduating, right? Which was a given. I'd never really had to struggle or, you know, graduating was just something that was going to happen. It was just about how early, right? And the second thing was getting into a PhD program. And I'm sure looking at me now, it'd be hard to guess that I was ever pursuing a PhD or I was ever, you know, a candidate for a PhD program or trying to be one at least, you know, and even me looking at myself right now, I would have a hard time guessing that. So I don't blame you at all. So I told you guys that I was majoring in neuroscience, but I never told you guys why. For the longest time, I've been fascinated by dreams, you know, how they work, where they come from, what they mean, you know, what the implications could be if we could understand and control them. And overall, I'm just so fascinated by how the brain really works. This three pound blob of essentially what's fat is responsible for some of the most complex and groundbreaking scientific innovations and artistic creations, everything from Einstein's relativity equation to Michelangelo's David. All of that is right here. And every one of us has one. And for so long, the brain has been the last frontier of the human body. and I wanted to be a part of that. So that's why I chose neuroscience. And like I said, I will be making my way back there someday. But, you know, somewhere around 2019, 2020, the universe really showed me that right now is just not the right time for me. So I shifted direction. Now, this is whenever life for me shifted chapters from science to money. Heading into my last year of college, this was during the quarantine era of 2020. I started to understand and learn and introduce to money how it works, right? I was introduced to trading, Forex, crypto, uh, stock and options trading, everything. I started my first business that ultimately crashed and failed. It was here during 2020 and 2021 that I really started to grasp that the world had so much more to offer me in the immediate future than you know what a degree could provide. So I took every opportunity to learn more. I lost money trading, I won money trading. And I remember like yesterday, one of my worst days ever, was whenever I lost my entire net worth in a single afternoon, which was about $15,000 at the time, trading Tesla after hour options, right? And it was just absolutely insane. I remember that day crushed me so bad. And I'll never forget that day for the simple reason of this. I never forgot how easily money can leave you if you don't understand it, if you don't have the patience 
to learn how it works. And ever since that afternoon, I've been dedicating myself to understanding and learning more about it, not just for myself, but for the people around me as well. Now, all of this leads up to my graduation. I finally graduated spring of 2021 at 21 years old. Um, with a 3.7 GPA and with a ton of honors, but most importantly, I graduated debt-free. And I remember telling my mom that I did my degree for her. At this point, I had already given up on the idea that I was going to PhD program and I wanted to take a different route. So I remember telling her I did my degree for her. Now I'm going to live the rest of my life for me. And up to now, I'm pretty sure, I don't know exactly where my degree is, but I'm pretty sure it's sitting in my storage unit just waiting on me. Um, I don't even think I've framed it yet, which is... Ooh, I need, I should probably do something with that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I find all of that pretty ironic. Life is, like I said, life is very funny. But shortly after I graduated, I moved back to Houston. I found a remote job as a data analyst, making about 60K a year, and I bought a house. Now, and at this time, my passion led me to real estate. You know, at this time, I was introduced to guys like Grant Cardone, and I wanted to learn everything that I could to get a part of the game. So I saved up the money I had from trading. I had, since then, I had made the money back that I lost all in one afternoon, like I was telling you guys. Um, I saved that. And I saved my graduation gifts, and I bought it. This beautiful 2,000-square-foot house on the south side of Houston. I remember I went the entire summer just grinding trading and I didn't even get a haircut the entire summer. I was just so locked in on trying to find deals and you know trading and doing my best with that. And on August 15th, 2021, I closed on my house. And this was about the same time that I was introduced into the world of content creation. Now, leading up to the point where I actually posted my first ever video, TikTok was always seen for me as an app for it you know, little kids and girls, right? To do dancing challenges and, you know, jokes, right? It was like a bad knockoff of Vine, honestly. But it eventually gained some traction with me up to the point where I actually downloaded it for myself and started to look at other videos on there. And honestly, guys, whenever I look back, I wish I started earlier, but I'm a firm believer in divine timing. So everything happens whenever it's supposed to happen. So I can't be too upset about that. And I remember telling my cousin Kayla that I wanted to try this TikTok thing out. And to this day, that is probably the most important text message I've ever sent in my entire life. Because I've said this before, if it wasn't for my cousin Kayla encouraging me to actually put myself out there and create videos, I certainly would not be here right now talking to you on YouTube. I told her about some guys creating these lifestyle videos and I was like, if there's anything I could create on TikTok, this would be it. And I never looked back. So on September 28th, 2021, I posted my first ever TikTok. I still have it up because it's just so important to me. But it was just a simple video of me setting up my bed frame. And honestly, looking back at it, the video was pretty trash. I'll be honest with you. The video is not that amazing. But the point is, it's all about starting somewhere. Right. So many people, they try and figure out, oh, man, I need to have everything perfect before I start. And I used to think the same way. But one thing you'll realize as you start to mature and really evolve, you don't need to have everything perfect. You just need to start because 90 percent of people think the same exact way. And why do you think no one does the things that you're trying to do? Why do you think so many people failed? Because they never even tried to begin with. And like I said, if it was not for that video, I would not have the platform that I have right now. Content for me was just so fun. I enjoyed editing. I enjoyed creating. I enjoyed planning out posts and trying new transitions. And I've said this before, if there was anything that I could do on this earth where skill wasn't a factor, it would be a movie producer. I love Christopher Nolan, everything from Memento to Oppenheimer. And the reason why I feel like I've stuck with content creation so long is because in a way, content creation allowed me to kind of scratch that itch. You're telling me I can actually direct my life as if it were a movie and post it online. That's the same thing. I could literally direct my own life as a movie. And that was my passion, my piece. And I feel like that's what allowed me to stay consistent for so long. For two years, I've been posting videos. Now, after that first video, my page really started to take off. You know, and you're talking about a kid that had maybe 500 followers coming out of high school. I had literally 100K followers on both Instagram and TikTok all because of one video. There was a period in spring of 2022 where I was literally gaining 10,000 followers every single week for like eight weeks straight. And it was just the most insane time of my life where it was like, oh wow, this is really happening. And I think for a long time, I didn't really grasp what was going on, but this was when, okay, now we're serious about taking content. Now all of this led up to spring of 2022, whenever I signed my first ever brand deal. 
and up to that time i had never gotten paid anything i did a few gifted stuff but i never got paid anything for the videos i was consistently putting out there and believe it or not it was with the shaving company and to this day i couldn't tell you what they saw in me now that single brand deal was worth more than half of my monthly salary at that point the simple videos i was making of me just living my life and sharing tips about things that i cared about was all of a sudden worth almost five thousand dollars each and what really sealed the deal for me understanding the world of the creator economy and how all these things work was not even the deal that i got for myself but i remember whenever i was negotiating that deal and we actually finally put terms onto paper and the representative that i was negotiating with she sent me a contract it turned out to be a wrong contract one thing about me whenever i get a new agreement i i don't i don't care about anything else but the compensation section so i scrolled all the way to the compensation section just to see that check on there and it turns out that deal was for almost thirty thousand dollars it said thirty thousand dollars on the contract and i stood up for my chair i know people don't just hand out free money so obviously there's a mistake here and i want you guys to re listen really closely i looked up and down that contract and whenever i got to the name right to see if it was for me right it wasn't for me it was for somebody else the lady sent me a wrong contract for nearly six times as much right five six times yeah six times as much that i had agreed to and so i looked at looked up this person i was like okay who is this guy getting paid six times as much as me for the same exact contract or the same exact deal what what's really going on so i looked at this guy i had more followers higher engagement and the truth is bottom line i was worth more than him i just didn't know it yet and i took that moment of realization as a sign that I was in the right place. God had finally put me in the right place. I just needed to do some work in connecting the dots. Now, by August of 2022, I had signed multiple brand deals. I had signed my first $10,000 brand deal. And August 2022, August 15th, 2022, to be more specific, I made the decision to finally quit my job to pursue content creation full time. And let me be the first to tell you, that was the most nerve wracking decision I'd ever made in my life up to that point, because I was worried about so many things. You know, is content going to last? Am I good enough to make it? Is this going to be consistent enough? All this extra stuff that your brain feeds you whenever you fear something. But the key is that I didn't let that stop me. And I'm so glad that I didn't because who knows, I might still be at my desk at home, you know, typing in and punching away some numbers for a report no one really cared about. Since I quit my job in August of 2022, my life has changed a few times. Now, one of my favorite quotes ever is by Confucius. He said that every man has two lives. And the second starts when he realizes he has just one. My second life story whenever I was in a car accident on October 1st, 2022, when I was coming home, some guy ran a red light and completely totaled my car. I mean, ah, oh man, like I, that Lexus IS 300 2021, people sleep on Lexuses, by the way. That car was an absolute beast. But anyways, I was literally only two blocks away from my apartment and everything happened so fast. And even though I was physically unharmed, I didn't think, I don't think I had a single bruise. I had some soreness on my back, but I don't think I had a single bruise on my body, but I can't even put into words the mental state that I was in even months after that crash. That was my moment where my feeling of, you know, immortality that a lot of old people say that young people have that feeling of immortality. That's when that got stripped away from me. And I truly started to grasp that I could actually die. Up until that point, people would say that life is short or you only have one life. And I would say, yeah, that's all fine and cool for you guys. But you know, me, I just, I felt like I had so much time. I felt like I could honestly live forever. And for a long time after that accident, there was almost like a veil in between reality and some afterlife alternate universe that was just so razor thin. I felt like if I could just reach through that veil, I could be on the other side of things. Everything just happened so fast for me and it was so salient that it just stuck with me for a very long time. All that considered, I'm so grateful that that happened to me because that's the thing that woke me up. Whenever I was in that car swerving around, my fear wasn't that I was gonna get hurt. I don't even think I was worried that I was gonna die or anything. My initial reaction, quite honestly with you was, somebody just hit my car. I was so I was so heated about someone hitting my car. That was the initial reaction that I had. But whenever everything really sunk in, the fear wasn't that I was gonna die. The fear wasn't that I was gonna get hurt. The fear was that I almost died 
without fulfilling my purpose or even figuring out what it was for that matter. I almost died without leaving a legacy. I would have just been gone just on a random Friday night. And that really stuck with me. And it's unfortunate I had to be in that situation to realize that, but it did. And ever since that day, I made it my mission to start building something that would outlast me, something that would go beyond me, something that actually mattered and that I could actually be remembered by. And all of that has led me right here, talking to you right now. My commitment to discipline, strengthening my body, fortifying my mind, sharing positivity and thinking abundantly. All of that comes from everything that I've been through, all the people that I've met, all the lessons that I've learned. And since October of last year, leading up to this day of recording, I've been so dedicated to building my business, you know, learning more about the universe, cutting out distractions and making deeper connections with the people that I actually love and care about. And all of that focus, all of that dedication is what I want to share with you. And as I continue on this journey, I want to have you a part of that with me. So I know that was a lot. And to be honest with you, my story is not over. It's, it's far from over. As time goes on, I will continue to evolve. I'll continue to progress. But it was so essential for me to set that foundation with you so you have a better understanding of who I am. So you understand better where I'm trying to go, what I'm trying to accomplish, the things I'm trying to do. Obviously, I can't put in everything. A lot can happen in 23 years, and it's really hard to boil that down into a few minutes, right? And the important thing is, is that I'm still building. I'm still growing. My story is far from over. I am super excited about the future and what I'm doing with Creator Unlocked. And I really cannot wait to share it all with you. But it all starts right here. So I'm not worried about that. So to cap off this video, I want to thank my mom. She's been begging me to send me all of her videos. She's not on Instagram or Facebook, anything like that. She's, I don't know if she's a little, she's a little too old for that or whatever. But uh, she's been begging me to send me these videos. And so I feel like I'll finally do that. And I want to thank you as well for watching and to some extent believing in me, right? We're on the same team now. I need to figure out, you know how Rihanna has the Rihanna Navy and Beyonce has the Beehive, whatever. I need to figure out a name for you guys as well. I'm sure that'll come eventually. It has to be natural. Think about me. I love nicknames. Um, anybody that I'm close to, I want to have a nickname for them. And it has to be a nickname no one else can call them. Um, so I'll come up with a nickname for you guys or somebody can comment something. I don't know. But that's everything for now. It's going to be a long road. I'm sure we're going to do a lot of amazing things together. And I'm excited. But until then, see you soon.